What's up, guys? I'm John. I'm Sharice. And we are back with another Cubist Corner. That's right. Every week, me and my little beautiful wife over here are giving you guys great tips, tricks, and advice to hopefully entice, ignite, and take your relationship to a whole new positive and better level. You know, over the years, we've learned a lot of tricks just by our relationship alone. And then, you know, obviously talking to our friends, observing other relationships out there, we some that see some of the different issues and problems they might be going through or learn something from them too as well because other people might have some good tips and tricks that we might not know so it's always good to be open-minded right too. you don't always know everything even no. though you think you know everything sometimes gotta learn from somewhere right <laughs> or you learn by experience there's right. only a couple ways to do that and so, google can only tell you so much so. yeah i wouldn't be going by google or chat gpt or anything like that for <laughs> love life uh, but it's really up to you so every week we're going to give you guys this great advice this week is nothing different we got some great things to help you guys keep your relationship healthy, vibrant, and strong, mm. right? Because it's one thing, it's, it's hard enough to find, a, you know, a partner out there, especially in today's atmosphere and environment. Of and where, today's filters. The dating or today's the filters. grinder apps. Or we just had somebody say that to me yesterday. Like, do you know anybody that can at least look like 50% of their filtered photo? Because... <laughs> They showed up to dinner and I had to leave. I was like, whoa, yeah. that's bad. That's the only bad thing about, you know, online dating, right? You know, it could be filter or face tune or body tune until you see me a real person. You're like, who is this? This oh is not gosh. who I was supposed to meet. Where is Jessica? Who are you? You are not Jessica. So, you know, one, I would do like a real FaceTime with somebody to really see who they So are. actually, actually, believe it or not, they have FaceTime tune thing app now. And they got a FaceTime tune thing. And so you could FaceTime with somebody and it would put the filters on, including the filters to make them look skinnier, cheekbones in, the whole nine. Wow. And well, that's FaceTime. You know, if you do set up a date like that then and you go there after the FaceTime and it's not what you expect, then you could pretty much tell them, hey, listen. I would have is... the printed photo inside of my purse and pull it out and be like, this is not This you. is false advertising, right? <laughs> but let's say you get past all that. Everybody's exactly how they were supposed to be, right? So you're getting there, you're trying to start this relationship. So that's tough and alone, just a dating thing, mm -hmm. getting past the, are we a couple, are we not a couple? You know, how's this gonna work? Because I'm sure a lot of people out there have this conversation every single day, like, well, what are we? You know, and some guys, they don't wanna put the title on it. Mm -hmm. Some girls don't wanna put the title on it. Mm -hmm. So they just keep, you know, going however it is, right? Yeah. Everything's okay. Being but random. you're gonna wanna eventually find somebody to settle down with, hopefully, right? Because, you know, as you go through life, you know, if you're a young guy, of course, you, you might want to get with as many girls as possible. <laughs> but at the end of the day, that starts getting old and boring. We're tiring to a certain extent. And then, you know, you might be 40 or 50 years old. You're still single. And now you're looking for somebody to settle down with. You want children. Uh, you want to grow old with somebody. You want somebody there to be able to wipe your butt when you get older. He wants to wipe right? his butt? No. <laughs> I'll be able to do it until I die. I'll so. do it. I'll do it. No, I'll do it. <laughs> but, you know, once you get past all this hard stages that you're going to go through, right? Meeting somebody, making sure they're going to be good. Then you're going to put the title on it. Then you want to get into the relationship. So the relationship at that point should be going very strong. You know, whether you're in the honeymoon stages of that relationship, you guys are, you know, experiencing new things together with each other, which are creating those bond type environment situation scenarios they're going to help you guys grow stronger but once you start getting past that right then you start getting into your daily routines and your comfortability mode and the comfortability mode starts kicking into effect right yep. um, then you know you really have to start and you have to keep working with the relationship you had to start working to get the relationship but you got to keep working to keep the relationship Especially mm -hmm. if you guys want to progress and you guys don't want to start growing apart. It's a job. Or, or things, you know, not going like you want them to be. You know, things can change. People grow apart if they don't spend enough time with each other or if you don't do some of these simple things that we're going to talk about here. So one, first one is like meeting or greeting your significant other when you come home, right? 
So when you leave, you want to greet him and say, goodbye, honey, I love you, give her a kiss. And then at that point, when you get home, like, hey, honey, I'm home, how was your day? Right? Yeah, don't just like walk into the room and be like, hey, I'm home. Give me a and sandwich. Get me a sandwich. Where's Hold my beer, dinner? Please. Thank yeah, you. I mean, you probably want to get that far. You're going to go. go and, on. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I'll get you a cold beer tonight. Don't worry. John doesn't even like beer that much. <laughs> he doesn't really drink. Um, he'd be like, get me a smoothie. Give me a cold water. Give me a smoothie. Berries <laughs> on top. <laughs> Literally. But don't just like walk into the room and like put your stuff down all of a sudden and then you re crack open your laptop. Now, this is very common, right? Yes. I mean, Think about it. Are you like throw your, throw your shoes off real quick, hop on the bed and, or like on your couch or whatever it is and then scroll on your phone? You didn't even bother to ask like, hey, how was your day? Hey, did you, are you happy right now? What's going on? Are you, hey, well, what's going on? Let's talk. Like, I feel like the talking portion has really just diminished. Yeah. You guys just don't talk. It's yeah. just, it's really actually very strange. And I'm like, I'm observing it throughout everybody else's relationships right now. And I'm like, you guys got to, like, you guys got to talk. Like, Communication's key. We talk about gotta, every episode. It's, and it's not just communication, because communication you got to have. But, like, it's just generally speaking to each other. Like, mm -hmm. asking, like, hey, how was your day? You know, and, like, actually caring to listen. Not say, hey, how was your day? And then go scroll on your phone while they're talking to you. Because <laughs> that's, that's, that's not communicating. Exactly. That's a good way to get your phone broken uh, by crazy uh, people uh, like charades. <laughs> So Just that's kidding. one. Not really. You know, giving the greeting <laughs> before you leave and then when you get home and then asking, hey, how was your day? It's really simple to do. Yeah. And it leads into an open question so they can start expressing themselves or venting to whatever it is that they need to talk to you about. And it, it might be really good. Like, hey, listen, I got a promotion today. Or it might be, I hate my boss. I hate my job. I hate what I'm doing. Right? And then, you know, you got to be that shoulder to kind of like listen to them and then talk with them afterwards. And that might make them feel a lot better about what the situation or scenario was that they had to go through at work, whether it was positive or negative. Mm -hmm. After that, you gotta have a date night, all right? That's so important, it's, guys. It's really important and it gets put to the side a lot. And it then, does. You know, a lot of people think, oh, well, we spent all this time together. So why the hell do I need to go on a date? When you're spending time together, like, yeah, me and Sharice spend a lot of time together at work, I but it's not quality time where it's like, we're focused in on a relationship. Yeah. You know, it's not like a love you work. Like that's what we're doing. We're we're having fun together, you know, experiencing something. No, it's not that. We are working, right? And there's some fun that goes along with that, but you're you're focused in a whole different way. You're focused on what we're doing here at the, at the job, mm -hmm. how are we gonna get these tasks completed, and not how I can benefit my relationship. Yeah. It's just not going through my head when I'm at work. Now when I get home or off work, then it's a whole different story. Then you know, I, I feel more in touch and in tune with what's going on in my relationship. Yeah, I have a second to think about it. Right. Like there'll be times even, cause it's, I mean, listen, I am crazy busy. I, one day I'll, I'll put it out there where you guys can follow me around for a day and see how crazy busy I am. But I just don't have time to think during the day. So sometimes it'll literally be like nine o'clock at night and he would have brought something up to me maybe earlier in the day like, I don't know, it might've been like about an article he read or like, hey, guess what? And I was just kind of like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But didn't really acknowledge it because I was in the middle of doing a hundred things. And then I would like acknowledge it like seven hours later. I'd be like, hey, that article you brought up earlier today, like, you know, so what was that about? Like, tell me, tell me, tell me. But I'm like, I'm trying to re-acknowledge like what, what, what took place, you know, have a conversation, talk to him, you know, see what's going on, you know, spend quality time together. The date night is supposed to be quality time. You know, it's supposed to, whether it's a movie, it's dinner, mm -hmm. It could be going for a walk. I mean, going for a walk. it could be something simple. You don't have to spend money. No. You can literally do anything, right? I mean, it could be anything. Um, Netflix, you know, like, hey, we're going to allocate this two hour window just to watch a, a movie on Netflix and not do anything else but just chill and talk. And, and don't pass out. <sighs> don't pass out, yeah. You know, John always passes out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll be so sitting there watching the movie like, <laughs> This is a great movie, right, Ben? Yes. Yeah, I like that part too, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> All righty then. <laughs> so that's another big one too, right? Thank God we had those dogs. Setting, yeah, talk setting to the, dogs. the time aside for your relationship to have a date <laughs> night. Because it's important. The other thing to really help you have a healthy and strong relationship is, you know, daily might be too much, but I would think at least weekly or maybe a couple days out of the week, you're thinking what you really love your partner for, right? Why you really love your partner, finding these positive things and affirmation about them. And hopefully they have these positive things. Because if they don't, yeah. we have a whole bunch of negative things and 
like one or two positive things, and that might not be the right partner for you too yeah, as well. At least let it weigh. You know, the good has to outweigh. That's the other thing. You know, a little bit. People need to recognize, you know, a little bit earlier if they're in a toxic relationship or going to be into a toxic relationship. Mm-hmm. There's plenty of red flags. I think it's Write that one. down. Red flags. We'll be talking Write about that, that next week. <laughs> um, but you know, for this, you know, you really want to be in tune to to the person that you're going to be, you know, in this relationship with, and find these different things because there's obviously something that drawed you to this person. Where your eyes are pretty, I like the way you look, uh, I love your personality, you're so funny. I mean, these are really like vague, common ones. But these are different things that, you know, might draw you to it. Like, you know, I like the way that you brushed your hair, the way that you looked like that. It could be something so minor. I love the way you cook, right? It it could be, you know, you clean the house awesome. Dang. I I love all these things, right? Uh. (laughs) <laughs> Thank God I'm pretty. Clean cook. I'm going to do some laundry. <laughs> so glad know? I'm pretty and I got a good smile. No, <laughs> Except well, for all that cooking. I mean, the cooking is for sure. <laughs> <laughs> We're terrible. We're terrible. Uh, no, I mean, like, but these are different things. Yeah. So, you know, do some of these different things to improve and keep your relationship healthy and strong. Make sure you understand that you have to keep working for that relationship to get better. If not, it's going to be like anything else. If you don't put work into it, you reap what you sow and you might not get anything back or it might be an empty relationship. Mm -hmm. So that's it, guys, for this week's show. See it. Tune in every Sunday for me and my beautiful wife, Sharice, here for Cupid's Corner, 11 a.m. on ABC. If you guys miss it, make sure you can try to DVR it or if you miss it completely and you want to go watch it, just go over to YouTube, type in Titan Medical Center, you'll get to see all the great Cubics Corners and all the other cool content that we got from Titan Medical Center. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Go do it. And if you want to improve your uh, bedroom life, make sure you hit us up. we got therapies for that too. 727-389-3220. Text or call us and say, John and Sharice recommended me to get the better performance in the bedroom. Plug. Later, guys. <laughs> Bye.